Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and right now we are hovering over the surface of the asteroid known as Itokawa. Back in 2010, the Japanese team, uh, the Japanese scientists were able to retrieve a sample from this asteroid and return it back to Earth. And for the past 9 years we've been pretty actively studying these samples, trying to figure out secrets of the universe, secrets of our solar system, and basically just playing around with samples from another world. But very recently, another team decided to study these samples for something that we haven't really been able to explain. Very important topic. Where exactly did the water on our planet Earth came from? So, even though we know a lot of things about our planet, we're still not entirely clear where the water came from. One of the last studies I've analyzed and discussed actually talked about how water may have come completely from the inside of our planet. As a matter of fact, our planet has a lot of water on the inside, and it's quite possible that it just came from within the planet itself. But some scientists thought that maybe it came from outer space, maybe it came from comets. And so many scientists were so excited to study this comet right here that was in the news a few years ago, but turns out that we were wrong. The water on many of these comets is very different from the water on Earth. Okay, so how about asteroids? Well, we haven't really studied them that much. But this asteroid here was essentially the first ever retrieval mission of a sample from an actual asteroid. And thanks to this mission, Hayabusa 1, we're now able to finally answer the question of where water may have come from on our planet. So here's uh, the short version of this story. The two researchers behind this paper were um, given five little samples of the asteroid five little grains actually that they were able to place into the spectrometer here to analyze what's inside of them. And luckily for them, two of those grains contained samples of pyroxene. This is a mineral right here on Earth uh, that we know can potentially contain a lot of water. On our planet, uh, pyroxene can usually be found in the upper mantle here, along with olivine, and they both um, can store water pretty well, although today we believe there's actually even more water underneath in things like perovskites that can store quite a lot of water as well. So um, finding pyroxene inside of those samples was lucky, and they decided to see if there's water in there and if it's any similar to uh, the water on Earth. And just as Lady Luck has it, this little sample right here contained enough water for them to analyze it and to determine that the water inside the asteroid Itokawa is very very similar, if not identical, to the water on Earth. Now, okay, so first of all, how can water be different? Water is water, right? Well, let me demonstrate this with this one simple picture. Here are two beakers, both with water. One water contains water, and the other water contains water. But as you can see, in one water, the ice is floating, but in the other, the ice is actually sinking. This right here is also known as heavy water. Basically, it's water that contains a little bit more deuterium than the water on the left. What's deuterium? Another very simple picture to explain all of this is right here. So, this is a normal hydrogen. This right here is a hydrogen that contains neutron that is known as deuterium. Deuterium is obviously a little bit heavier, and it creates water that is a little bit heavier as well, which we usually refer to as heavy water. In a regular sample here on Earth, we expect water to contain a certain percentage of deuterium, and if we take a sample of water from somewhere else, to see if it's the same water, we need to just measure the percentage of deuterium. Sometimes deuterium is much higher, which suggests that water came from somewhere else. But when deuterium in sample 1 equals to deuterium in sample 2, we can determine that it's probably from the same sort of uh, environment, from the same sample, and potentially even from the same source. And that's kind of what they've discovered in this little grain that they got from the asteroid. In other words, the water contained just as much deuterium as the water on Earth, suggesting that it's probably the same water, from the same source. So that kind of links it all together, suggesting once again that it's very likely that at least half of the water on Earth came from this. It came from asteroid collisions. It was delivered by asteroids because the water on those asteroids seems to be relatively similar, at least on that one asteroid. So remember, this is just one sample so far. 
which is why we're really excited that there are two more missions currently trying to get more samples for us to study. As you probably know, there are two missions. One is once again from Japan, and this is Hayabusa 2 mission that has recently finished collecting samples and will be returning them hopefully by 2022. And the crazy thing about that mission is that they even fired a huge projectile into the asteroid Ryugu to study impact uh, effects and it's, it's a pretty cool mission. We'll definitely investigate it in the future when we get more results about it. But it's really the sample that's going to be returned from Ryugu that's probably the most important part of this mission. It's going to allow us to hopefully once again study the actual water inside and see if it's same as the water from Itokawa and the water from Earth. And the second mission is by NASA, this is the OSIRIS-REx mission that's also planning to return samples hopefully in the next two or three years. So both of these missions, once these samples are returned and studied, will allow us to finally understand if, just like in this study, at least half of the Earth came from the asteroids. What about the other half? Well, the other half could have actually come from the inside. As a matter of fact, it's very possible that um, despite the water that came from outer space, at least um, half or possibly even more came from within Earth from um, literally just the upper and lower mantle. We know that there's still a lot of water in planet Earth. A lot of it is stored underneath the crust and uh, most of it is still not even released. Uh, most of it will only be released in the next billion or so years. And we also know that other planets like Venus and Mars contain water inside as well. Which is great news for us because one day maybe we'll be able to use that water to terraform those planets and to make them more habitable. But for now, all this particular study tells us is that it's very very likely that pretty much at least half of the water on our planet came from these wonderful rocks that used to orbit in the same region as Earth and eventually collided with our planet. In other words, there's even a way for us to try to calculate how many asteroids this took. And maybe one day in one of the future videos we'll do that. But for now, all you need to know is that half of the liquid water on the surface is probably from outer space. And that includes the water inside of you, of course. Suggesting, of course, that you and I are quite likely made out of this space stuff right here that once upon a time collided with our planet, created a large explosion and then created a lot of liquid water that eventually turned into life. So, once again, we are space dust, and not just space dust, we're partially space asteroids. You and I, we're basically made up out of all kinds of stuff that came from outer space. And anyway, on that note, until we discover more and until we actually settle this question once and for all, I think this is it. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about where the water came from, but also this obviously raises a lot of questions. But the future missions that will return to Earth in 2022 and 2023 will, I hope, conclude all of this discussion once and for all. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and wants to know more about the universe itself, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.